These are the basic oral structures. The line running along the lip, separating the lip tissue from the regular skin, is known as the vermilion border. This little depression above the lip, un underneath the nose, is known as the philtrum. The corners of the lip that resemble a C-shape are known as the labial commissures. This little piece of skin connecting the lip to the jaw is known as the labial frenum. The tissue that is loosely attached and darker in color is known as the alveolar mucosa. The tissue that is pinker in color and firmly attached is referred to as the attached gingiva. The border separating both tissues is known as the mucogingival junction. The tissue in between the teeth that resembles a triangle is known as the interdental papilla. The roof of the mouth is referred to as the hard palate. The tissue right behind 8 and 9 is referred to as the incisive papilla. This line running along the hard palate is known as the palatine raphe. These waves running horizontal along the hard palate is referred to as the palatine rouge. The snake-like pit depressions back here is called the stitis fovea or the fovea palatine. The area located distal of the terminal molars on the maxilla is called the maxillary tuberosity. Behind the hard palate, the softer tissue is known as the soft palate. Alright, stick out your mouth and say, huh? Ah. Uh, More. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, the structure hanging that resembles a punching bag is called the uvula. These two structures over here are known as the palatine tonsils. The tissue in front of the tonsils is referred to as the anterior pillar. The tissues behind the tonsils are referred to as the posterior pillars. And the tissues in the farthest depths is referred to as the fossas. The inner lining of the cheek is known as the buccal mucosa. This structure right here, the little flap of skin, is known as the parotid papilla. And within the parotid papilla lies the Stenson's duct. The white band you see running across the buccal mucosa is referred to as linea alba. Some patients have more pronounced linea alba than others. 
All right, on the mandible, the space running distal of the terminal molar is referred to as the retromolar pad. So on the maxilla, it's called the maxillary tuberosity, and on the mandible, it's called the retromolar pad, or the retromolar area. This skin of tissue connecting the buccal mucosa to the mandible is referred to as the buccal frenum. Some patients have trapped sebaceous glands that appear like little yellow spots. Those little yellow spots are referred to as Fordyce granules. Commonly, you'll see them along the buccal mucosa or the inner lining of the lip adjacent to the commissures. Fordyce granules or Fordyce spots. The deepest depths of the tissue are referred to as the vestibules. So the vestibule is the deepest depression of the tissue. This surface of the tongue is referred to as the dorsal surface. The large tonsils that line in a C-shaped pattern are referred to as the circumvallate papilla. The papilla that resembles a mushroom shape is referred to as the fungiform papilla. The hair-like or grass-like papilla that fill most of the dorsal tongue is referred to as the filiform papilla. The side of the tongue is referred to as the lateral surface of the tongue. The papilla that line the lateral surface are referred to as the foliate papilla. Underneath the tongue is referred to as the ventral surface. These little hair-like depressions that stick out are called plica fimbriata. This piece of skin connecting the tongue to the floor of the mouth is called the lingual frenum. The folds underneath the tongue are called the sublingual folds. This structure right here, this little bump, is known as the sublingual caruncle. Within the sublingual caruncle, lies the Wharton's duct. And the veins you see within the tongue are known as the lingual veins. This patient doesn't have any, but sometimes patients have excess bone growth. If this patient had excess bone growth on the floor of the mouth, we would call that mandibular tori. If the patient had excess bone growth on the hard palate on the maxilla, we would call that torus palatinus. This concludes the basic oral structures.